What's up everybody? Welcome to Hammerdown Motorsports. My name is Steve Fast. I hope you guys are having an amazing day out here in Pennsylvania. I've got shorts and a t-shirt on. I'm so happy to finally be able to do that. Over here, we do have the Suzuki Reno. And if you guys have been following the channel for a while, this is our Copart buy. I bought this car not running. It just said mechanical. It had a clean title. I figured it'd be a good car just to pick up cheap. Maybe do a little flip on it. As you can see, it's in not terrible condition. It's a 2008. And we ended up having to do a whole pile of work to this car. The timing belt was broken. I had to have the head completely rebuilt. We went through and did a new water pump. I did a new timing belt, new tensioners, new idlers, all that kind of stuff. Just kind of went through and made sure that everything was right on the car. There actually was a broken stud on this side because somebody cross-threaded one of the wheel nuts. So I ended up putting a whole new wheel bearing assembly in this side. And as you guys have probably been wondering, does this car run? Well, let's find out. There we go. First start up on the channel. As you can see, we do have an airbag light. Got a little Randy Travis playing there. We do need to address that. It's probably just one of the connectors underneath the seat to the module. It's a pretty common thing with these cars. But as you can see, it does have 114,540 miles. The only other light we have on is the one for the tires, the tire pressure monitors, the batteries are probably low, something like that. So that is something that probably needs to be addressed as well, just so that system is intact. But either way, as you can see on a cold start, this thing is running like a dream. So one thing I did find on this car after I did get it running, it does have a small oil leak to the oil cooler and it's just kind of a little crush washer that needs to be replaced. I did buy a whole kit of them so one of those in that kit should end up fixing that issue. So I'm going to get that all fixed up and ready to go. We're going to do a little bit of cleaning tips on this thing, kind of see if we can get that interior nicely cleaned up, maybe give you guys some ideas of stuff to use on your own vehicle. And this vehicle actually is going to neighbor Mike, if you guys remember him from other videos, his daughter is going to be starting driving very soon and this is probably going to be her first first car so hopefully it will be a good running vehicle for a very long time I know we did everything in the right way spent money maybe where I didn't exactly want to we spent a bunch of money on machining and stuff like that but at the end of the day the job is done right and as you can see it does run really really well So for those of you who've been following along on Instagram, you probably already know what I'm about to show you. But for those of you who do not follow me on Instagram, my Instagram is hammerdown underscore motorsports underscore USA. And we did something pretty amazing. I mean, one of my favorite cars of all time is the third gen IROC Z Camaro. So we have the IROC Z decal on the side of the 2017. Now you might wonder why would I put IROC Z on a SS Camaro from 2017? Well actually this car is in the midst of being turned into an actual official IROC Z track pack car. Now the company that built the wing actually owns the rights to IROC Z and they're actually in the middle of building the hood for this car as well. So it's kind of going to be one with a heat ejector on either side. It's going to have more of like a ZR1 kind of center section and we're going to have it all painted to match the car also we will be getting a set of the irox z wheels eventually then we're going to be getting the official numbered nameplate making this car an official irox z track pack car and i think it's going to look absolutely amazing all right now that you guys are all up to date on what we've been doing here around the shop with the copart build with the camaro ss we're going to be moving on to the 2019 ram 1500 we do have a tonneau cover for the back if you guys saw my previous video Kind of ran out of time on that one so we're going to be doing our roll and lock tonneau cover install and let's get started so some of you might be like me and you couldn't wait to take everything out of the box i do have our roll and lock set already in place on the truck it's not bolted down or clamped in any way it's just kind of set there as you can see we still have to remove the plastic and all that kind of thing this is the first step for this part of the install there is two sections to this install book one is for one with the little sliding kind of cargo management system. My truck doesn't have that, so I moved on to the section that is required for this truck. And we're gonna go step by step and get this whole system installed. So the first step is to take these little black covers that the kit comes with and they have a little protective film on the back that covers the adhesive tape on the back. So basically what you're gonna do is clean up this area here and we're gonna place that over top of the stake pocket. So we're gonna pull the rest of this protective covering off 
set it nicely in place, and we should be good to go on to the next step. So now what I did with this, I did just put some heavy pressure on this for about 30 seconds to a minute, just make sure that everything got nice pressure and adhesion. And what we're gonna do now is just take this little bit of protective film, pull this off. As you can see underneath this, it is a flat black to kind of match your plastic, so you pretty much won't even see this. So the next step is to put the cassette in place. As you can see, we already did that. And then what we're gonna do is take off this top cover and then we can get that plastic off of the top. So over here you can see there is one exposed screw and I think in this section here, there's just a slot. So what you wanna do is take your screwdriver, so the Phillips screwdriver, we're gonna remove this screw on either side. Now that both sides are removed, we're able to just kind of move this, as you can see. There's this little slot on the front and the screw is the retainer. And we can take this whole cover off and get all this plastic off. So next up, we're gonna be putting some brackets here on the back. As you can see, there's a top hex hole. This is where you're gonna put your expansion bolt. And this is kind of works kind of like a riv nut. It's got threads in it. And what you do is you hold the outside. As you can see, there's like a 12 point. You put a 5 8 wrench on there and then you tighten the center. And this whole thing will kind of collapse in the hole and then you're gonna have threads to be able to mount your bracket. So we've got our expansion bolt in our top hole. The bolt head on this is a eight millimeter. And like I said before, we have our 5 8 wrench that's gonna hold it in place. And you can use a ratchet on this. I'm gonna use my quarter inch impact, to kind of just run this in tight. You wanna make sure that you keep it up against the bed of the truck. So here we have the center section of the expansion bolt. We are gonna be reusing this. We do have the supplied washers here. So we're gonna put one of those on this bolt, just like so. And the next step is to take this little shim pack here. We're gonna remove the protective film. We do have more sticky adhesive tape here. And as it shows in the instructions, we are gonna be putting that on this bracket at this time. All right, our brackets are ready to go. The reason for this little addition to our bracket is the fact that the little kind of threaded part sticks out from the box slightly. So now when this is sitting up against your box, this is gonna give you the clearance for everything to sit nice and flat up against the side of the bed. Okay, we have our brackets installed on the rear. Now it's time to move on to the next step. So next up, we're gonna grab the side rails for either side and set them in place on either side of the bed and get ready to fasten them to the cassette. So as per the instructions, next step is to turn the knob on the cassette to the unlock position. So to get your rails aligned properly, you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to this little notch right here on the end of your rail. And you're gonna slide it over top of that piece of aluminum right there. And when you got it slid into place where it's supposed to be, it'll be about this far forward in the proper position. Next, as you can see, we have a little hole in our rail and then there's a little boss kind of behind it. We're gonna take this flag nut and this screw with the Phillips head and we're gonna run the screw through the hole, put the flag nut behind and tighten them up. One thing I did notice on here, these holes don't perfectly align just with these two pieces sitting together. So what I did is I put my screwdriver in the screw before it was through the hole and I kind of just lifted up on this section right over here, kind of lifted the two together and then the holes lined up perfectly and I was able to screw it in. So next up, we're gonna fasten the rail actually to the side of the bed. I've already got this one loosely in place. It's just a bracket that looks like this. It's got a hole in the bottom. And what we're gonna do is take our Allen bolt, put a lock washer on it and just put it up through the bottom onto these brackets. For now, just loosely, cause we might have to do some adjustments. And also we're gonna be putting an Allen bolt with a lock washer in the back bracket as well. So now for aligning our rails, we've got our cargo shield up here and just kind of in this notch on either side is the exact measurement that you need to have between your rails for adjustment. It's 58 and three quarters of an inch. If you wanna take a tape on that or you can just use this as a guide. Also what they wanna have is where this goes over top of the tailgate, you wanna have about an eighth of an inch gap here where it overlaps onto the tailgate. So we have one thick shim in there right now and I think we're pretty good on that. I don't have it tightened down. I just kind of put that in there just to make sure our clearance was good. I would say this side could probably use maybe one of the thinner shims because just as this comes down over here, I do have it a little bit too close. So I'm going to put a thin shim on this side and just kind of see where we're sitting. I'm going to tighten down these two back ones just to kind of make sure we have this nice and level. 
and we should be good to go as far as tightening the rest of this up. All right, looks like we've got a nice eighth of an inch gap. It's nice and even across the top of the tailgate on both sides here. So our shim pack should be good to go as far as that goes. Both these sides are tight. Now we can go on and start tightening the other ones on the rail. Now for all the ones that have the Allen head style bolt, these are tightened to seven Newton meters or 62 inch pounds. So now we got all of our clamps, everything is nicely tightened and torqued down. And I just wanted to close the tailgate just to make sure that our gaps are good here again. Make sure that when tightening this down, this didn't change at all and our shims are the way they're supposed to be. So now it's time to test out how straight everything is. Make sure we don't have any binding or anything like that. But I think by the looks of things, we should be pretty good. And we're gonna see what this tonneau cover looks like when it's closed. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this little wing nut it's just here for shipping, I believe. That allows our tonneau cover to move away from the cassette. Let's set that down there for now. And now we're able to just grab a hold of the top of this. Slide this back. Everything seems to be sliding really nice and free. No binding whatsoever. We still do have it in the release position, so it's not gonna lock on us. Just gonna move this back in, move on to our next step. So now that we're sure our track is nice and true and our cover is working properly, we can move on and install the cover that we took off in the beginning of our install and we can get this top part all nicely covered up. So you can see the notch in the cover as you release it, it does put it into the lock position automatically. So now when we pull our cover closed, you can hear it click. Now it hits the first click, you can stop your tonneau cover right there, leave the rest of the bed open if you want to, and you can drive down the road. This isn't gonna go anywhere. Or you can go to the next stop, just about there. If you only have something small that you want sticking up the back, you're fine there as well. And then you can go right to the full lock position where you can see we have a very nice seal here up against our tailgate. Everything is very nice and aligned. There is a bit of a gap here. This is just the factory gap for the tailgate. There's not really a whole lot you can do with that, but the rain, seeing how this is overlapped here just a little bit, the rain's pretty much just gonna go down the sides of the tailgate. It's not really gonna go inside your bed. So everything you put in here should stay nice, dry, and secure. So now to release your roll and lock, all you do, turn this knob, release it, I don't like to let these slam necessarily, just to keep everything working nicely. And when it goes back into that slot, it puts it back into the lock position. So now that we have our tether connected over here with the supplied carabiner, we can just grab a hold of it, pull our tonneau cover towards us, makes it a whole lot easier to get this thing going. You don't have to walk all the way to the front of the box to be able to pull the tonneau cover back. Also on the carabiner is your key because if you move this little piece of plastic over here, it reveals the lock, so you can lock your tonneau cover up. You also have the lock on the tailgate from the factory, so you're gonna have double protection on this. And if we look underneath, you can see this thing is made out of some heavy duty material. This is a lot like what they put on the front of stores so people can't break in. So even if somebody wanted to take an ax or something like that and try to smash your tonneau cover in, if they thought this was loaded up with gold or something like that, there's a very good chance that this is just gonna bend and there's no way they're gonna be able to get in. And if they do get in, I'd be very, very surprised. So our drain tubes go in like this. You just kind of push this rubber onto this drain on the bottom right here and you're gonna run it through this hole in your box so when the water does drain out of the bottom of this it's not gonna go into your bed it's gonna go out towards the outside and keep everything inside here nice and dry so next up we're gonna put on the cargo guard there's a little rubber washer that goes in between this plate here and the screw itself so you're gonna to want to get that in behind just to keep everything from rattling and this should pretty much complete our install on our 2010 Ram, we also had a earlier model of the Roland Lock, and this one is far superior to that one because you don't have to actually put anything on your tailgate. On the old one, you did have a little track that went in here and there was a little pin, and then on the end of your Roland Lock was a little kind of a plastic tooth that would lock into it. So it would be actually locked into your tailgate. With this system here, you can actually close this all the way and close your tailgate. If I were to do that on my old one, it would have broken off the little tangs and it would have had to been repaired. So this way, so much better. You don't have to worry about explaining to everybody how to use your roll and lock in fear that they're gonna do it wrong. And this just makes it so much more accessible. Because there is one thing that I did worry about too. 
because before this installation, I kind of assumed that this roll and lock was the same as my old one, and I was gonna have that issue with the tailgate being locked into the roll and lock, and then you can't use a function like this, which now you still can. Well, there you have it, everybody. Everything is nicely installed. I think it looks absolutely amazing. That was the installation of the roll and lock tonneau cover on the 2019 Ram. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. And as always, keep that hammer down.